Hi, and welcome back to Type 1 Diabetes Explained. Today, we will take a look at travel with Type 1 Diabetes and how to make sure you are safe no matter where you're going or what you're using to get there. Throughout this episode, we will make use of the customizable packing list available to you on the Type 1 Diabetes Explained website at t1dexplained.org. These lists are available for you to download, customize, and print. We will first look at some of the things you need to bring on your trip, and later we will look at some of the procedures and processes for travel. There are three main things that you need to remember to bring, no matter where you are going or for how long. 1. You need to have a method to test and monitor your blood sugar, whether that is a CGM or a meter and test kit. 2. You need a method to treat low blood sugars, such as fast-acting carbs or other food. And third, you need a method to treat high blood sugars, which would be insulin either in a pin or insulin pump. For all of the lists as well as the items listed in this video, remember one important thing, the 200% rule. This rule simply states that you should always bring 200% of the supplies that you expect to need. If you plan on changing your pump twice, bring enough supplies for four changes. Plan on testing your blood sugar about 30 times, bring enough for 60 times. This rule always makes sure that you will have enough supplies should any break or get lost, or you end up using more than you planned. We'll go through many different types and lengths of trips, but we'll start small by first looking at what you should bring if you're just going out for the day. Here's what you should bring. Fast-acting carbs, blood glucose meter or CGM, lancing device, lancets, test strips, alcohol pads, CGM receiver or smart device, if applicable, insulin pin with needles and alcohol or insulin pump, and a medical ID with your doctor's phone number. If you're planning to go somewhere overnight, then you will need all of the items on the previous list, as well as any CGM or insulin pump replacements that you may need. As always, remember the 200% rule with all supplies. Multiple day trips are similar to overnight trips. The only difference is that you simply need to bring more of the supplies to cover you for the days you'll be traveling. Lastly, if you're traveling for extended periods of time, there are several important things you need to remember. First, the obvious, pack double of everything that you think you need. But second, if you're traveling for more than 30 days, you will need a method to keep insulin refrigerated, as most insulin expires in about 30 days time if not kept cold. In developed countries where you have easy access to refrigerators and coolers, this isn't an issue as you'll most likely be able to find a refrigerator that you can use. However, if you are traveling to a location where refrigeration may not be available, this is a little bit more challenging. There are several options you have. The first is to buy cooler packs or cooling chemicals. Ice cooler packs are useful if you expect to be without access to refrigeration for a few days, but after that, many of them must be refrozen, which renders them useless if you don't have access to a freezer. The other option is to use cooling chemicals. These often involve small packets of gel or crystals that, once mixed, will cool their surroundings. Either of these two methods, plus a well-insulated container, can help keep your insulin cool for longer periods of time. Additionally, there are many different types of small coolers and refrigerators made just for this purpose. Just make sure you take into account how often they must be charged to continue working. The other option you have to access insulin while traveling is to buy insulin while you are at your destination. Even if there are refrigerators accessible, it may also just be easier to buy insulin while you are traveling than to bring a large supply. Many countries will have pharmacies that sell insulin similar or equivalent to what you use, and many are less expensive than if you live in the US. Before you travel, make sure that you know the location of pharmacies that sell insulin that are near your destination, as well as thoroughly research the rules regarding its purchase. Always make sure you have money to pay for it, in the correct currency of course. There may not always be easy access to the same exact type of insulin that you normally use, so monitor your blood sugars carefully as your body may respond differently to different types. Now we will look at the different types of travel. If you are traveling by car or bus, then things are pretty simple, as you can pack however you want and will most likely have complete control of your luggage. However, if you're traveling by cruise ship or plane, things can be a little more complicated. If you're traveling by cruise, it's important to notify the cruise line well ahead of time, often 30 days is what they ask for, so that they can make accommodations such as adding a sharps box to your room, ensuring you have easy access to a refrigerator, and making dietary adjustments. Remember, you are allowed to treat your diabetes anytime, anywhere. Now, the question we've all been waiting for, what about airplanes? Security is very strict for flying nowadays, and many people with diabetes often wonder, am I allowed to bring my supplies aboard? The answer is yes. 
TSA has special procedures to help make sure that security is maintained while letting you get your supplies and equipment through, and you have the right to keep all of your devices on you at all times. Here are some of the basics when it comes to airport security. When you arrive at security, it's a good idea to notify a transportation security officer right away that you are wearing a medical device if you are wearing a CGM or insulin pump. You can also do this by using a TSA notification card that describes your condition and the devices and medications you'll be carrying. See the link in the description for the notification card. Remember that insulin pumps and CGMs should not be put through the x-ray machine and it's also not recommended that pumps and CGMs undergo the airport body scan. Instead, ask to use the regular metal detector with your device or ask for a regular pat-down by a TSA agent. The TSA may conduct an Explosive Trace Detection, or ETD, on your site to ensure that there aren't any explosive materials. This often involves you touching your site or insulin pump, and then the TSA using a swab to test your hand for any traces of explosive material. For all of your diabetes supplies that aren't located on your body, it is recommended that you pack everything you need in bags that will be carried onto the plane, rather than bags that go into the hold, as the temperature in the hold can get below freezing, which can damage some of your supplies, especially insulin. Additionally, it is also a good idea to divide your supplies into two or more separate bags in case one gets lost or damaged. Dividing your supplies over multiple bags makes sure that you don't lose everything you may need all at once. The TSA can conduct a visual search of your supplies rather than having them go through the x-ray scanner. Pack all of your supplies near the opening of the bag to allow the TSA to make a quick and efficient visual inspection. For more information about the processes and regulations regarding airport security with type 1 diabetes, visit the TSA website at tsa.gov. Finally, always anticipate delays with the inspection of your equipment, so make sure you give yourself plenty of extra time to get through security. Hopefully you now know more about how to travel safely with type 1 diabetes, and can enjoy the benefits of vacations and travel, even while managing your condition.